So now we're finally getting some good weather here. Actually, it's been quite warm in the 80s and 90s, and we are all excited because we get to be outdoors more. So I wanted to discuss a little bit about some common injuries that may occur when you're outside working in your yard um, and doing things of that sort. So the first thing I wanted to talk to you about is just a brief um, overview of some general things that may have something to do with back pain, shoulder pain, and knee pain. So back pain is pretty big. Um, whenever you are lifting something heavy such as mulch. So a lot of people are out mulching in the neighborhoods and those mulch bags are a little bit heavy and they're not quite stable, they're very flimsy in a, in a sense. So you have to be very careful with how you do that. So if something is positioned like this on the floor and you wanna lift it up, what you wanna do is set yourself really close to the item that you're lifting. You wanna squat down, almost kinda of sticking your rear end out to protect your knees. Come on down, grab the item you're picking up, and as soon as you start coming up, you want to bring that item close to your body. Closer to your body, the better you have more control over it. If it's out here, that puts a lot of things in a bad position. Your back is being strained, your arms are being strained, your neck's being strained. So anything you carry needs to be close to your body. Now, for instance, I want to take this box over there. What I don't want to do is I don't want to twist my body like that, because if you have some issues going on in your back, Twisting is definitely not indicated for that. So what you want to do is keep it close to your body, turn as a whole unit, come close to the place you want to drop it down on, and slowly drop it down on it like this. The second joint are shoulder joints. Now, a lot of times when you're in the yard, you're potting, you're planting, and there's a lot of repetition involved with that. When you start doing repetitive movements over and over again, it causes some inflammation in A, possibly your joint, also your tendons and your tendons connect those muscles to the bone so they start going back and forth back and forth with those movements and it can cause inflammation so what you want to do is too much time on the same task is generally not a good idea you want to take rest breaks in between those so that you're giving your joint a good rest and you're not constantly doing the same movement for several hours it's pretty common that people will complain of knee pain when they're outside a lot of times you're kneeling down on the ground when you're planting your flowers digging up the soil to put those flowers in and it's important that you give them some support so I know that if you go out to the store there are really common kneeling pads that gardeners use and you can kneel on that and that will give you some cushioning however if you notice when you're kneeling your knees are very bent and the problem with that is is that in that same bent position you may have some soreness um, you might have some stiffness in the joint when you try to get up. Pretty common, especially if you already have a history of knee problems, such as osteoarthritis. Um, your knees are not going to like you too much if you stay down in that position for too long. So what you want to do is make sure you're getting up several times while you're doing that. Kind of walk around so that your knees are not in that bent flex position for a really long time to give them that extended position so that they start feeling a little bit better. Common symptoms that you might have after doing these activities, when you have back problems and you just have some general tightness across the back, um, and some soreness, that's pretty normal. When you're doing something you're not used to doing on a regular basis, it is okay to be sore. Sometimes the soreness doesn't even occur right away. It might be later on that day. It might even be into the next day, and that's called delayed onset muscle soreness, and that is very normal. So just with taking care of that, all you have to worry about is some ice or some heat. Um, if it's just very painful, then ice would help with that. If it's just soreness in the muscles and you're touching and you're very tender, heat's going to help with that because it's going to loosen up the muscles and relax them. People usually think that it takes one specific incident or trauma to cause problems, but usually it's gradual over time. So if you get up and you've been doing some activities where you've been lifting and you may have been twisting and you automatically feel some kind of pain radiating down your leg, then that's a problem. Um, that would indicate some kind of um, disc issue going on in the spine and that's something that you do not want to take lightly and you want to take care of that right away because if you do not put good attention onto that now it will definitely get worse and it will be harder to treat later um, so radiating symptoms what does that mean you have in your spine some discs and when there's abnormal pressures and movements being put on those discs those discs can sometimes push out onto the spinal cord where your nerves come out. And if that happens, that's why you get pain down the leg. So don't forget that pain down the leg and having no back pain does not mean 
um, it's a leg problem. It usually means it's a back problem. So as far as your shoulder is concerned, general soreness and tender in the muscles around the joint is pretty normal. You know, also up until the neck area, you have some big upper trap muscles here. And when you do a lot of movements that go like this, you're working these muscles a lot and they will get sore and tight. And like I said, that's completely normal. Um, some heat would help some of that and some basic stretches. But some serious issues that occur in the shoulder, um, if you hear a popping um, going on with a movement followed by immediate pain and then the decreased ability to move your arm in any direction, that can indicate something definitely more serious going on possibly a rotator cuff issue. The rotator cuff itself is devised of multiple muscles that surround the shoulder joint, and the tendons are um, overused when you're doing lots of repetitive movements. So if it's something that's been like wear and tear over time, and then all of a sudden you're outside and you're gardening and you're still doing those movements, and you hear that pop, and you have some pain immediately, and you can't raise your arm, that's something you definitely want to look into more so that it can be addressed immediately. So knees, people generally will be sore and stiff as well. Maybe a, a little bit of mild swelling, especially if you have arthritis. Um, it's very common that with arthritis you have fluctuations in swelling where one day you might not have any and the other day you might have some. So when you're doing something that's taking over several hours of time, it's pretty common to have some mild swelling. You just wanna use some ice for that to bring the swelling down um, after the activity. And in the next day when you wake up if you're still sore, a warm bath or shower or a heating pad on the knees is okay and then some stretches would be beneficial as well. Serious injuries in the knee or more serious injury would be if you heard a popping uh, followed by some pain and some more than mild swelling um, and then a decreased ability for you to bend or straighten your knee that's possibly indicative of um, a meniscus tear and the meniscus is the cushioning between the bone in the top part of your leg and it distributes weight through to the bottom part of your leg. So when you don't have good um, cushioning between the two areas there, then sometimes they're likely to, the meniscus is likely to tear. And so if there's a tear in there, you're gonna have pain. So don't get frightened <laughs> by that. If you feel it catching and you feel it popping and that occurs, it doesn't necessarily mean surgery at all. Actually, physical therapy is, is highly um, warranted for this kind of injury. Studies have shown recently that actually physical therapy is the better first um, measure of treatment. When you have any of these serious issues that might occur and you have this pain that is definitely above and beyond your ordinary soreness, it's very important to take care of it. We wanna do some strengthening around the different joints. We wanna strengthen your core, for instance, for your back. We wanna strengthen your rotator cuff and your shoulder, and we wanna strengthen your hamstring and your knee, um, or your quad and your knee. And all those are gonna provide a good support system for each of those joints, and that's gonna help alleviate some of your pain. The stretching is going to be good for getting rid of some tightness in any of those muscles that are there, and that will make you more flexible. Stability exercises, so especially with the knee, um, good balance exercises will help give you some more stability in conjunction with those strengthening exercises so that you can stay on your legs a little bit more, you can tolerate doing things on your legs a little bit more. And then also with physical therapy, the manual part, that might be some moves of your joint to increase the range of motion. That might be some soft tissue mobilization to loosen up some of the soft tissue that's tight. We might also be doing some range of motion exercises if you do not have full range of motion. Um, the other thing that we can do is really give you a good education about your injury. We spend a lot of time with you when you first come in here, and so you will learn a lot. And then after that, we will devise a home exercise program for you specific to your injury and teach you different ways of preventing it from being an injury later in the future. So once you have an injury, you're more susceptible definitely to re-injury, so we want to make sure we prevent that. So if you're having any of this pain and you've had it for a couple days and it is not going away, definitely want to take action now. You don't want to wait. So give us a call at the number listed below and you can get in for an evaluation and we will help you get back to those activities pain-free.